Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to introduce you to digital forensics of the iOS devices. In this case we have a try hack me challenge right here prepared and I definitely recommend you join this room so you can try out this challenge because it's really fun. So as you can see right here in the challenge we have a lot of Q&A stuff that we have to go through and this is just theory. I recommend that you actually go through this because it's really interesting and it's really useful to read this fully in order to understand what we're going to do today. But I'm going to just jump into the practical part. We're going to be analyzing the image from an iPhone and we're going Going to be doing it under operation just in case which is just the scenario for this room it is the practical part and it is the most fun part so let's go start the machine now we do have a scenario we're working in a crime task force and we have been investigating the root cause of the recent outbreak of criminal activity in this case we have brendan hunter which has been arrested but we need to analyze his file system of the phone and we're lucky to have the image of the phone because even though his phone is locked with a passcode we're actually able to use the recent lockdown certificate from his computer and actually find the backups that he made recently from his iPhone because he connected the iPhone to the computer and uh, decided to do some backups before he encrypted all of his data. This allows us to create a logical file system dump and we basically have an image and this image is going to appear right here in this box it is prepared for us. Now of course it isn't an image just one file it's actually multiple files and we have DB files and uh, similar extensions like this where you're going to see that we have to deal with plist files which are simple they're mostly just like text files they look a lot like XML because they're partly XML. So basically we will need the SQL viewer, the hex editor like HXD and a text editor like Sublime or something and actually in this challenge I haven't actually used the HXD or hex editor. I mostly just use the SQL viewer. So now let's just switch to the full screen of the machine once it loads and then we can start solving the challenges. The first question is who was the recipient of the SMS message sent on the 23rd August of 2020. So in order to find the SMS messages of the phone we have to open the file that we have. So right here we have the zip file. This zip file is extracted right here. So this is what we are going to work with. So if we take a look at this folder right here I'm going to notice a folder inside of it called bar and if we enter this folder right here we're going to see a bunch of folders. Now uh, you could just dig through these and you can easily find your stuff or you could just follow my directions because I already know where everything is. So usually we can just navigate to mobile a library and in our case we're looking for an SMS so we're going to go SMS. And right here we have the DB file and we have drafts. Now in drafts there's nothing here and this DB file basically tells us listen this is all you're gonna have to do. So we're gonna open this DB file. We can go right click and open with sublime text or even uh, make it easier and just go open with and now pick the program. We can look look for another program on this PC. There we go. DB browser for SQLite and we can use the DB browser for SQLite. Now alternatively you could just do it like this. You could just run the DB browser SQLite from here, just double click it and once it opens just drag this inside of it. So if I double click this, all right, and there you go, it opened a file already so I'm going to close everything. Let me just close the database and we're just going to drag this file inside of this. Now don't worry, I know this looks like a DLL file but as you can see it says database file. Now what you can do is you can go to view, file name extensions right here. Now you'll see the .db. Now this is just the structure of the whole database and we have the tables right here and we're interested in the data inside of tables. So in order to browse the data we have to navigate to browse data. Simple as that we can just pick the table that we want to use and in our case we want to use the message table. And as you can see right here we have the messages that we were looking for. So if I go back right here we are looking for an SMS message 23rd of August. Uh, this is just a pop-up you can just ignore this. So now let's take a look at the date and as you can see 23rd of August says did you get the goods. Now if I scroll back right here we can see that the recipient is Lewis Randall. If I copy his name I can just navigate back page it right here and here's the solution to our first question now easily enough what did the message say all we have to do is go back right here and look at the text and it says did you get the goods and we have to write that down the next question we have is looking at the address book what is the first name of the other person in the contacts now I tried this person right here but it doesn't seem to work so I figured well actually they didn't say the SMS DB they said address book now what is address book do we have a DB uh, under address book so I just minimize this a little bit or actually I can quit this because I opened it twice accidentally and I can just go back to the library and I can go back to address book right here and we have two of them one is the images and one is the address book itself so we don't really care about the images but we do care about the address book so right here we have a bunch of tables and it looks really confusing but don't worry we can ignore the indices and triggers so we don't really care about that so we can just navigate to browse data and right here we're gonna pick table again the same way as we did before and I'm gonna pick a B person because this is the one that seems to have person information so let's press a B person and as you can see we have some people right here Jenny and Lewis so it's one of those 
and I wrote Jenny in first and it worked. The next question for this is what is listed as their organization? So what does Jenny do? And Jenny is listed under transportation. So that's what we listed here. And then the next question asks us to dig into the browser history of the iPhone. So what could we do to dig into that history? Well, we luckily have a file under library. We have the Safari browser. This is the browser that iPhone uses. Uh, you could alternatively use Chrome or something like that, but it's mostly just Safari. So navigate to Safari. I have to open the DB browser for SQLite again, and we have to just dump in the bookmarks or the history. So since we're looking for the bookmark first, I'm going to input the bookmarks first, and then we're going to navigate to browse data and bookmarks. And as you can see, we have the blog from CMnatic. And if I copy this and I can paste it right here, and this works. Now we have to find the remote ID, or in our case, it seems to be the IP of the sender. As you can see the solution. Now, how do I get the remote ID? Well, simply, I just looked up the email database. If I go back to right here in the library under mail, I can see envelope index. And as you can see, it's a type of a file, but if I go to mailboxes, there's a plist file. And if I open it, there's not much here. And as you can see, it's basically unreadable. There's a bunch of null stuff, and I don't really wanna find anything here. I don't think I will. So what I'll do instead is I'll just take a look at this file and let's see what we have inside and as you can see this looks like SQL and if we look right here it says SQLite former 3 so that means this has just been renamed so all we have to do is just say DB for example and now if I open the DB viewer I can just pop this in and just maximize this and we'll go to browse data and go to messages and as you can see right here we have the remote ID of the message and this is the IP that we're looking for so we're gonna copy this IP and we're gonna paste it right here Next thing is what is the name of the company on one of the images stored on the suspect's phone. Now we are going to have to look through images on the phone and this is going to be easy enough. We're just going to have to go one step back. As you can see, it's not in the library. If we take a look, there's nothing here, but we have media right here. It's definitely not in applications. So I'm guessing it's going to be right here. Now photos are usually under DCIM or photos, but if I take a look at under photos, there's nothing here. Uh, Safari doesn't really seem to have any photos, but DCIM does seem to have photos. MISC folder has nothing, but if I go to DCIM, I am we have two pictures and if I look at them like this in a larger format we can actually see that we have some text so this is highcliffart.com now if I copy this it doesn't work but if I copy try hack me which is the other company it does work so that's pretty much it one more challenge to go so now what we want to do is we want to look at the cookies that were left behind the cookies can be used for the attacker to maliciously authenticate on some website so if I take a look at what is the cookie left behind and we have to navigate back one more step and if we look into applications and then this application and as you can see we have documents and library documents is empty library has cookies right here so this seems to be the cookies that we're talking about if we right click on them and edit with notepad and we take a look at the cookie data we can actually see that we have the string that we're looking for so THM cookies and we just copy this and that works We can look at voicemail information, we can look at weather, we can try to find location, we can find cookies, calendar, cache, address book, Safari, this is the browser information as I said before, email, we can go back, we can look at the media that the person has, photos, photo data, we have some SQLite files here as well, if the person purchased books and stuff like that, if there are any taken pictures, uh, we have application information and this is just one folder. So you can see that we can actually dig into system configuration and you can see stuff like this. So if I take a look at Notepad, Right here we can actually see that we have network interfaces right here stuff about custom network settings and settings for logging onto the wi-fi Now the stuff that it's redacted seems to be redacted by the guy who created the challenge because he used his own iPhone image as it seems. Now this challenge doesn't really have much more information, it's just been made sure to provide enough for the challenge. But I definitely invite you guys to try out this challenge, it's a really fun challenge and I really enjoyed it. So let me terminate the machine and that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.